Hey everybody, we're making another thing. This is, uh, you'll often see these called like a 15 square puzzle. In this case, it's an eight square because we're doing a three by three grid and not a four by four. So the idea is these would all have numbers, symbols, or a picture on them. And you move the pieces around to get your solution, whatever that happens to be. Uh, this is my prototype just to kind of test with how I'm going to make it and what I'm doing with that one. And a few things I have learned with this. the prototype, a couple of things I've learned. First is the relation to the tab and the slot. Uh, on this one, I made the tabs the same length as the troughs are deep. And that's actually just causes more friction. So I kind of figured playing with this one, if the tab is just a little bit longer than the trough is deep, then that kind of takes your friction point down to one third of what it would be if the whole joint were, I'm gonna make some obscene hand gestures here, if the whole joint were able to rub rather than just the front tab. I'm not sure if that makes any sense with this obscene hand gesture I'm making at you right now. Number two is, uh, as you can see on this one, uh, I cut my, my side pieces and it looks like the frame here is a lot wider than it is down here. That's because I cut them all the same and then had to remove uh, the material to get the tab to come out of it whereas the trough just got cut in. So I've got to take that into account on the final. We're gonna have fun with the dado blade and lots of very minute micro measuring and precision stuff to make a better one of these. Okay, so while I'm focusing on trying to make a cool looking shot, I have already made my first mistake. So, uh, like I said before, I wanted to make the troughs a little shallower than the tabs were long. So I just cut the first bit out of what's gonna be a trough for us to be kind of over there. I'm removing all that, so I'd run it this way, flip it around, run it that way, and then move the fence to kind of walk it in. Um, but I did that to my full half inch depth, and uh, instead of, oh, actually, that's not true. I didn't mess up, I just thought I messed up. Because I'm gonna make my tabs long instead of my troughs shallow. So I'm good, and I'm second guessing myself. Shouldn't do that. Let me get back to work now. All right, so it's starting to look like a thing. Uh, two quick things. One that we learned from doing the prototype is that on the prototype I was using a, a traditional table saw blade which has the teeth that kind of stagger like this. And that was leaving little V troughs in the bottom of, of this guy, which is just kind of extra, extra wear and extra stuff, but I don't want to be there. So we traded out for a laminate blade, which has basically square teeth, but every other tooth is missing its corners. Um, and what that does is makes a nice, makes more, much, much more even uh, bottom there, as if I were using one big dado blade, which I don't want to do, because this is taking equal from the each side as I flip it around uh, in there. And another thing, you may notice that there's a lot of burning going on here. That's because we're using soft maple. There's a lot of natural sugars in the wood, uh, which is why it burns. That's why I put it on the cereal. Um, also, it's a nice hard wood, uh, and it will, it'll wear well, and it, it'll look nice and rustic, which is gonna fit our summer camp theme. So I'm gonna next uh, work on the tabs, which is gonna require some more math, and uh, I will tell you if I mess that up. a lot of dust like like a lot of it and uh, I think what's left is gonna be usable 
Uh, I've got parts pretty much rough milled, so I have my trough pieces and my tab tongue, whatever we're calling these pieces, uh, done. But I still have to trim these to length, and then the the parts that will be the inboard side of the frame. I'm still going to have to put an extra bit of tongue on them, so that where this comes down onto here, that'll have a tongue cut into it. I made a thing. I made a thing that works. It's way too fun to play with. So uh, it all works, it works well, and while we're getting the vectors together for the symbols that will be the, the clues for this puzzle of where all the, the various pieces go, uh, we're gonna go take a look at the sensor packages that I've made, and like a good cooking show, I've already done those, so we can just go, uh, go take a look. I've become a big fan of using Hall Effect sensors for our, all of our various triggers, and uh, there, people may say, "Oh, but it's a magnet, and that means that you know people can come, in, players can come in with magnets and cheat the game." But we've got a lot of magnets in these various pieces, so if you can actually correctly guess the the hidden location of all these Hall Effect sensors, then good on you. It would have been easier just to, easier just to solve the puzzle. Uh, so this right here, these are the uh, it's like a binary Hall Effect sensor. These are from Adafruit. And I've got my little test rig here, and when given the south pole of the magnet, light comes on when he's in range. In the video that we did a little while back for the maze cabinet that we did for Escape Alaska, I realized that these little Hall Effect sensors, uh, they can handle plenty of voltage. Uh, so you can have 12 volts uh, as your, your, uh, your VCC on these, and that's fine. And when there is no magnet, their data pin is putting out a, a, a binary high. So if you have 12 volts in and there's no magnet, your data pin's putting out 12 volts high. And on that one, I thought that, oh great, I can just use this and have the mag lock go straight to this. Unfortunately, these guys maxed out at, I believe, 40 milliamps, and the mag locks, uh, the little uh, standard 80 pound mag locks, are 50 milliamps. And those 10 milliamps do matter. Uh, but if you put a transistor in there, then you can have your Hall effect going to a transistor and it's the same thing. And you can just have, uh, when the magnet uh, is over the sensor, it basically kills power and through the transistor it goes off. No, clo no relays to click and give things away, it just happens silently and by magic. So with that, I came up with the FET, because pronounceable acronyms matter. Uh, FET is Parallel Hall Effect Trigger. Uh, it, sounded clever, so I just kind of wrote it on there. This is the version one, and this didn't work. I kind of rushed this, uh, trying to get multiple batches of PCBs in the same shipping, and um, honestly, this has so many problems with the schematic that I'm not sure which one's actually causing the problem. So, this is the FET Mark II, and um, it actually works. Uh, it's got a power LED on it, because I've, after making a couple things without power indicating LEDs, um, it's a really good little bit of information to have that it's plugged in and getting power. Um, and so there's a mag uh, sensor on the back, and when the south pole of the magnet comes in range, uh, your light turns blue, and that, that's just for an indication that you are getting signal. Uh, what this will do though, because he's getting 12 volts in, you can screw your maglock into here, and then this will be your maglock trigger. So when you have your piece in place, the maglock will disengage. Um, and the fun thing with this guy is that uh, the P in FET is parallel, so I can daisy chain as many of these together as I want, and then now any one of these in the chain becomes a viable path for the power going to the maglock, so you have to actually have all of these uh, with their, their magnets in place in order to kill the maglock. And I'm going to be using a lot of these. Uh, I ordered a bunch, and I've already gone through all 50 of my first order, ordered 100 more, and um, these are proving very useful, so I am I'm chewing through these, and the next version uh, is going to have a regular power jack on it, and also just because there's not many parts on here, but it is still time-consuming soldering all these on here, so uh, the next version I'm going to start playing with uh, getting into surface mount devices, because those are faster to solder, uh, or potentially just do a pick and place, where I can have most of this pre-installed uh, coming from the factory, and I just put on a few of the final parts, and then wire them up. I like these. I'm gonna be using a lot of these. Behold the finished product. It's got nice, silky smooth action, because we use maple and uh, very, very tight tolerance, not, not tight tolerances, very exacting tolerances, that were tuned over the prototype so that 
it worked very well. In tuning this one, we were shaving a 64th off of one of the rails to get it from binding to just moves like butter. Uh, all of the, the fets are in place. They're all daisy chained together with our little, uh, our little three, uh, three wire jumpers with DuPont connectors. So when we power this up, it all comes on. One light is not on because we're over there like that one. So when we bring him into place with the solve, with that one FET uh, not being solved, that's kind of the path that the juice runs for the, uh, for the maglock. And, uh, ba-da. I don't have a witty closing for this. We should probably come up with something. I got a little distracted doing this video talking about electronics rather than the woodwork. Every now and again, we kind of get off onto our, our new rabbit holes and we, it's nice to come back to our roots with precision woodwork, which is, it used to be what we were all about. And uh, it's good to know that we can still do that. Uh, but getting back to the rabbit hole I made over here, I'm definitely proud of this design. It is, it's a, a nice cross section of simple, robust, effective, and versatile. So on this one, I, we are beginning to look into getting our uh, PCBs made and doing all the pick and place where we can get these pretty much done. Because right now the big cost on these is the time to put all these parts on. And even though there's really not that many in the grand scheme of things, it still takes uh, a lot of man hours to put together the number of these that we need, seeing as we're using eight in one puzzle, other puzzles are gonna be using six, five, whatever. So. Uh, We'll be seeing more of these, and this is going to be a good experience for us to get into uh, higher tier production on the uh, electronics. So we'll, uh, we'll see you down the road with uh, our, our tails on that one and how that worked out. And if you like this, if you found this useful or amusing or whatever, uh, consider giving us a little, little one of these guys and, uh, and click the subscribe button because we're awesome and, and we're worth it. No, no, we're not. Okay. Never mind.